So hello everyone and thank you for being here today to our webinar dedicated to artificial intelligence and big data in the Middle East and the Gulf states. My name is Mishket Ben Ahmida. I'm the marketing project manager at Datum Academy and I will be your host today. So this is the program and as you can see, we will start with the industrial point of view and strategic vision of industrials. And then we will present you the academic point of view with all the artificial intelligence researches and works of different universities. For this edition, we are honored to welcome among our speakers Valérie Ayot, EMEA Director of Oracle Skills Development at Oracle University. Merlin Yamsi, Lead Solution Consultant at Google Cloud and Partner Engineering. The engineer Nabil Al Mahmoud, Executive Partner at Azola Innovation Accelerators. Hen Shaheen, Director of Datum Academy Middle East. Professor Mohamed Al Saidi, teaching at the University of Baghdad and Al Mustad Sareya in Iraq. Professor and Dr. Izzy Kabe, teaching at the Eastern Mediter Mediterranean sorry, University in North Cyprus. Uh, professor Ali Jewa, who is a professor and program coordinator in computer science at Oryx Universal College in Qatar, which is in partnership with Liverpool John Moores University in UK, and Professor Serge Miranda, scientific director of the Master of Science BR at Estia and president of Datum Academy. So you can write all your questions and remarks in the chat all along the presentation and we will answer them at the end of the event. We will also would like to mention that any disturbing behavior will be sanctioned by an exclusion from the room. So I wish you all a very good event and Professor Serge Miranda will now present us the skill revolution. I now give you the floor. Professor, you can unmute yourself. OK, thank you very much, uh, Mishket, for this presentation. Um, so I will talk at the beginning and I will talk at the end of, of this webinar, which is dedicated to applied AI. That means there are two major fields in AI, AI science and AI engineering. And definitely we are talking today about the second part and the teaching aspect of the second part. So that's the reason why we would like to emphasize the uh, professional aspect with Google and uh, uh, Oracle talking uh, talking first, and then the academy. And I will return to 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 be more precise on what we're doing in the area of e-learning in AI and the dynamics we build around that. So within this um, um, word, I would like to emphasize the fact that, and I take the word of uh, a friend, Jim Gray from. Uh, uh, we finished his career at uh, Microsoft and then IBM. He got the Turing Award, which is um, uh, the, considered the Nobel Prize in Computing. And he said um, 20 years ago, we enter the fourth paradigm of science. From a scientific point of view, we enter an era where data is a central resource. And um, we could imagine in the future, every job will be impacted by data management and data analysis. AI will be everywhere because it's a support of data analysis. So that's, I would say, the framework in which we are talking today and looking at the future. Next. So concerning e-learning, we have a uh, two major disruption. Ten years ago, that was the MOOC revolution in Stanford University, which stemmed there in, at Stanford, and then we led to Coursera platform and other MOOC platform, massively open online courses which is characterized by the forum between the students and mainly by the tutoring. For me, tutoring is the key word for success for e-learning. And we think about that and with a strong demand from the market concerning the fact that AI will disseminate everywhere is the fact that we need upskilling and reskilling of every engineer on the planet, not only computer scientists, but also um, managers in the company. So there will be these two targets we'll talk about later. So we we are facing, and the, the COVID amplified that uh, trend, the fact that now um, in the future, there will be these hybrid dimensions where degrees will come to students and those students will come to a given place to get a degree. That will be a dimension of the future. 
and which will be very important. Next, please. Which will be very important in some areas of the world, like um, Africa, where the population is going to double by 2050. And then the skill demand is, for me, the most important aspect um, of the future of e-learning concerning AI. Um, I will. I, you have here some key um, um, keywords concerning the future and the trend, etc. Just take the first one. Half of active jobs will require upskilling or reskilling in the future. So how we can build with a customer oriented approach with the top, with a bottom up approach, how we can build these skills in the future. And um, we, we learn a lot. Next, please. Uh, we learn a lot from 30 years of experience in master building with industry in Nice called MBDS master degree, which is online also. Uh, which is the first online master degree we put in the market, which is EMBDS. And now with EBR, we continue and we see the difference later. So we had the strong experience there. And the major lesson we infer from 30 years of successful experience there, because MBDS was ranked among the best, best master degrees in computer science in France, was learning by doing. And that will be the key for me um, the central part of the key success in the future for e-learning, learning by doing. That means how tutoring could be involved um, during the remote process. So major lesson, Lina, that enabled to have an innovation lab. We call it a data lab also. Uh, students have a project of innovation in the middle of their curriculum, and it's an innovation project with industry. We call that the proof of concept of proof of value, and that's very important. That participate in the knowledge creation, continuous knowledge creation. And then, the, of course, the sustainability of the project and the employability. And finally, I didn't put here the word, but the fact that gradios of the future in this area of AI will be um, POC centrics. And that's an idea we're going to share with them. Um, Valerie later, the fact that we're building radios by example, and that will be kind of series of radio we have to think about in the future, how we can uh, use marketing for um, um, uh, AI for marketing people, AI for financial people, AI for agriculture, whatever, this functional AI. So EMBDS was the first online master degree in Europe. We launched with University of Nice uh, in Paris called University Côte d'Azur now, and um, we launched it in 2019, and we continue with EBR, with whom we have much more flexibility about building institutes around. Now concerning AI teaching in France and kind of overview, there is an important report which stated the, the which give a state of the art and the vision for France 2030. And to build the curriculum there, they identified the next three jobs. Three jobs we have to look at and for which we have to build dedicated curriculum. Data scientist, which means a lot of mathematics and artificial intelligence there, statistics, etc. Then data engineer, capable of building a data lake, capable of administrating a data partially or fully. So data engineer taking data from different sources in order to analyze them. And then, of course, data, big data application developer, web and mobile. So the three major jobs around them, you can build the curriculum and that's exactly what we did um, with the BR master degree. Next. And the targets. We have not only the computer scientists with different levels, but we have the managers. And for them, we have to think about specific um, packages, specific gradios, where we have to mix academy and professional and industry. So that's concerning the education. You see uh, here, um, there is a, a new foundation skills for the digital economy. You can take uh, uh, in the orange part um, uh, the data management, data analysis, 
development of application, cybersecurity and cloud. That's the basic skills we are expecting in the future. Then for other skills, we have to look at project management, the fact to develop soft skills like creativity, cooperation and communication. But look at the basic IT skills. So then in the second part, I will look at Gradios we are building with Oracle University and Google in the second part, in the final part, academic part. And then uh, next, um, just major lessons we infer from what I say. Uh, next, uh, Mishket, is uh, learning by doing um, and um, hybrid learning, experiential learning and adaptive learning. All the detail will be there and I will comment that uh, later in the second part of my talk. So now it's um, I return to Mishket for uh, next speaker and I think it's an uh, industry part and Valerie and uh, Merlin will, um, yes, will give exactly. us their vision. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So now Valerie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. So my name is uh, Valerie Ayotte. It's an honor for me to be participating uh, in this event. So I am the EMEA director for Oracle University in a department named Oracle Skills Development. So Oracle University is the official training provider for all Oracle products and solutions. And whatever our modality of delivery in class, remote, and a lot of digital, our training courses offer both theory and exercise through labs, environment, and skill check. Our training paths are built to allow you to compete for a recognized professional certification in the market. And as of today, we have more than 2 million active Oracle certified in the world. The mission of skills development are to create and develop training and assets to provide knowledge and expertise for the current employment market needs and also for the future of work. The focus embraces many different areas all around the globe, obviously educational institutions, but also customer skills gap, employer and job specific, industry specific, job readiness and placement, innovation, economic development and so on. So regarding the importance of the skills uh, for the future of work, or would I say the work of the future, I just can agree, uh, agree and uh, reinforce the messages provided uh, by Serge. Uh, AI may be the most impactful technology of our generation. AI is the future of every enterprise. It is a fundamental technology. Uh, otherwise, it would like uh, saying we don't need a website or we are not going to use cloud computing. In an enterprise climate where disruption is now the norm, business is live or die by the ability to meet constantly evolving conditions. AI is at the heart of digital disruption and data is foundational and critical to the success of AI initiatives. Data is key to most, if not all, AI use cases. AI and big data are intrinsically connected. Without big data, AI couldn't learn simply. From the perspective of the team in charge of Oracle Cloud product marketing, they liken big data and AI learning process to the human experience. The human brain ingests countless experiences every moment. Everything that is taken in by sense is technically a piece of information or data, a note of music, a word in a book, a drop of rain, and so on. Infants' brain learn from the very beginning they start talking in sensory information, and the more they encounter, the more they are able to assimilate and process, then respond in new and informed ways. AI works similarly. The more data an AI model encounters, the more intelligent it can become. Over time, as more and more data processes through the AI model, it becomes increasingly significant. In that sense, AI models are trained by big data, just as human brains are trained by the data accumulated through multiple experiences. But what you, while you need to exploit the power of AI to reap significant benefit by sipping AI through the value chain of a business, you need a data strategy for AI if you want to turn data into business value. In the next few years, industry definitions and boundary will get blurry and organizations will move from product to platform-based business models. Organizations will need to redefine their business model, 
reevaluate their supply chain and reimagine their journey with their customers, AI will be integral to all these efforts. Regarding Oracle offering, next Mishket, I will not deep dive into all the solutions and capabilities of Oracle solution there, as we could spend hours looking into them. I will raise a focus on use cases and concrete examples of application and solutions developed thanks to Oracle AI solutions. So let me just provide you with a high level view on Oracle portfolio. By the way, I have added a slide at the end of the presentation in which you will find links to bookmark and to investigate, as well as the links to free training on Oracle. Our machine learning platform has been available for years now. Oracle AI is a family of artificial intelligence and machine learning services. Developers can add pre-built models to applications and operations. Data scientists can build, train, and deploy models within their favorite open source frameworks or choose to benefit from the speed of in-database machine learning. To address the modern enterprise AI needs, Oracle offers a host of services. So you can see the OCI data science, which provides a fully managed end-to-end -end environment for building, deploying, and keeping machine learning models healthy in production. Machine learning in Oracle database, which gives a complete data science environment with optimized performance when you have data within your data warehouse. Data labeling with a simple, consistent experience to make it easy to label your text or images and use those labels to customize your machine learning model and the developer layer with a comprehensive set of pre-trained plug and play AI services. So the objective really is making AI accessible to everyone with OCI AI services. Are there any industry limitations for the usage of AI? No, AI is fundamental and across every industry, there is a use case, manufacturing, for example, U.S. Steel's predicting air pollution near factory, insurance, oil and gas, automotive, banking, HSBC detecting anomalies in invoice, for example, telecommunication and media, retail, public sector, healthcare. Typically, AI in healthcare is the future. The world is seeing a global shift toward AI in the healthcare industry. Part of this stems from the healthcare industry transition toward a cloud environment for data management. With the cloud, data is now available on a real-time scale for further analysis. But rather than rely on staff to meticulously come through data, AI enables a much efficient and in many cases, much more accurate process. As AI capabilities increase, everything from internal operations to medical records benefit from integrating predictive model, automatic report generation, and other artificial intelligence features. As an example, Cerner, predicting patient readmission. Is there only one department within a company interacting with or using AI? No. There are many roles within many different departments in a company. Obviously, IT departments, but also human resources, marketing, finances, and so on. So let's come back on healthcare with the example of CMRA. Children's Medical Research Institute is a premier Australian medical and biological research institute and a registered charity. For more than 60 years, the institute has been committed to advancing healthcare for children. It has many firsts to its credit, including first research unit for newborns, microsurgery techniques to help repair blood vessels and organs in infants, and genetic disease research. A team of more than 170 full-time scientists and PhD students at the Institute work to save and improve the lives of children affected by gen uh, genetic disease. Research in various areas, including cancer, neurobiology, embryology, genomics, and gene therapy, enable diagnosis and treatment. The organization's experiments produce several terabytes of data. To analyze data from genomic sequencing, high resolution images from microscope, numerical simulations, it needed the best computational resources, including fast CPUs and GPUs. OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, 
has helped the Institute take advantage of big data and machine learning capabilities to automate, to automate routine database tasks, database consolidation, operational reporting, and batch data processing. It has also made data available much faster to the people who need it. A typical numerical situ simulation that once took CMRA about 30 days to perform now takes only five days with OCI data science, regardless of the number of simulation being run, six times faster with Oracle AI. Agritech, another strategic area. The essential equipment of the modern farmer is rapidly expanding beyond traditional implements like plows and tractors. These days, you can eye sky and base spaced cameras to that list, as well as sensors that examine microscopic, microscopic nutrients. And most important of all these new tools is AI, which takes the vast amounts of data gathered by those advanced device and turns it into insight that empower farmers to reduce costs while increasing productivity and sustainability. This revolution in our agricultural technology comes just in time. Climate change is making it harder for food producers around the world to meet the demand to feed growing population while preserving land and protecting natural resources. As agritech scales to a multi-billion dollar sector to the agriculture industry, innovative startups are at the forefront of developing this cutting edge solution. These are companies like Rome and Canticum, Brazilian agritech uh, agri startups, where Chrome applies AI to analyze the large tracts of plants, Quanticum focuses on the microscopic nutrients within those tropical soils. The solution identifies and maps nanoparticles that impact the soil's natural potential to produce food, bioenergy, and carbon. Also, AgroScoot. AgroScoot is taking on a massive ongoing computing challenge help farmers scan millions of images captured from their field to decide if a given leaf is healthy. If it's not, machine learning algorithm built into the company's autonomous scooting system determine if the culprit is one of the disease or pest it knows, or if it needs to identify the threats of a new treat. AgroScoot turned to Oracle Cloud to develop and run the system's application and algorithm, Applications update used to take 24 hours, now developers do them in minutes. AgroScoot machine learning relies on Oracle Cloud infrastructure GPUs instance, providing the speed and performance that machine learning workloads demand. These few examples illustrate why we are proud to partner with top institution, innovation leaders such as Estian Datum Academy, a master in computer science, such as the online master of science in AI and big data, EBR can open doors to many new and exciting jobs. The Gradeo, built to address specific skills, provide deep learning in a specific career field and are recognized by employer for their real job relevance. But Serge Miranda will present you the details of EBR and the Gradeos with the accredited and certifying, certifying path. Thank you very much for your attention, Mishket. I think that I leave the stage now to Merla. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Valérie. So now we will have the honor to uh, listen to Merlin. So Merlin, if you can unmute yourself, please. Yes, uh, can Perfect. you hear me? Perfect. Good, good. So my name is Merlin Yamsi. I'm a lead solution consultant at Google Cloud, partner engineering. I'm a very passionate uh, innovation guy. So my role at Google is to work with partners to co-innovate, uh, leveraging the best of, uh, of Google technology, uh, such as distributed cloud, smart analytics, AI, ML, uh, Web3, blockchain, metaverse, so a lot of emerging tech. And, and before joining Google, I spent 26 years between Sybase and SAP where I led uh, the SAP intelligent technology strategy, go to market and, and solution architecture. And not to mention, I've been uh, also an ex-student of Serge Miranda in the past. I attended the second cohort of MBDS in Sofia Antipolis a long, long time ago, where I obtained my master's degree in, in data management. 
So let's start from the, at the beginning. With the mission statement, Google has had since the company was founded in, in 1998. So Google was born as a data company and is now a leader in applied AI to, to, real, to, to apply AI in real world situation, leveraging the data, the API, and, and the intelligence. Next slide, uh, Ms. Chet. So to get there, we've built uh, a Google Cloud, right? So Google Cloud to accelerate every organization ability to transform through data power innovation with the best infrastructure. So that's the key, uh, the, the infrastructure as a service, the platform for transformation, and some industry solutions that really fit the use case that people need. And then the expertise and the digital transformation. And AI is really made for the cloud. In other words, it's, 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 it needs the cloud, right? So cloud makes it easy to store, manage the data of data and cost. You know, uh, uh, you can also give access, get access to supercompute type of resources. Uh, and, and, and now we are also opening to the, the tools and framework to build AI. To, to really make it available to, to everyone. That's why, that's why there is so much interest in AI now because the potential uh, has been sitting there for, for a decade and only accessible to very few experts. But now with the cloud, we finally have the, the, the means to unlock it. So Google AI is about utilizing artificial intelligence to provide efficiency to the world. So that's the goal of Google AI. And, and you, as you know, Google has been recognized, uh, Google recognized also the need for AI in solving major social economic problems like user experience, uh, health, education, transportation, agriculture, and more. Next slide, slide, uh, Ms. Kett. So Google has um, an uh, a decade of experience in deployed AI, from search, where you see the ranking, uh, speech recognition, translation, uh, you have a photo, you have a smart uh, a reply or spam classification in Gmail, the self-driving car, where where you with Waymo, where you have a, a lot of cars that have been driven with uh, autonomous driving, uh, reducing the cooling in the in our data center, uh, with YouTube. So we have been doing AI for very, very, very long, long time. Um, a lot of uh, uh, publication on, on AI, uh, above 8,200 publication as of today. So AI is very popular, right? But very few people know how to use it or even can use it. Right. So it's really about how to expand AI to millions of people beyond just of beyond just the expert. So that is probably one of the main goals. If you go to the next slide. So Google is a, a, an AI company, but there is a path to go to the AI when you are when you want to be an AI company uh, or AI first company. Uh, for us, for example, all employees need to be in the know-how about AI. So we have expanded the view for AI education from just the teaching engineers to the to teaching the whole company. So uh, uh, some outside of technical um, uh, teams and roles, for example, will want to know about general AI concepts uh, to have a discussion with peers. Uh, some outside of technical team may also want to have some techniques, some uh, know-how to apply AI to maybe so to one project. And then there's everyone in tech who need a deeper knowledge of AI to be able to leverage it as much as possible. So you have the AI enthusiast, people that learn and that transfer the learning, and then you have the AI practitioner, right, that will really learn to apply. Right, those are the the path that we have uh, 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 in the company. Uh, next slide. So to solve those challenges, um, next slide, uh, Michel. Our, our vision is to 
Oh, no, previous, <laughs> previous one. Yeah, our vision is to, um, at Google, is really to democratize AI, which means make AI easy, fast, and useful for all experts, developers, users, and more, right? So we, we believe that AI is a fundamental cloud technology that will eventually benefit everyone, or, or companies, people, and, and, and institutions, everyone, right? So the, the capability uh, of AI isn't in question itself. It's at the point where AI research has shown that it can add those power real applications. However, the, the biggest barrier to adoption is getting into the hands of customers. So this is why we're building uh, solutions that can broadly reach the market, developers, data scientists, researchers, you name it, right? And make it easy for them to adapt and deploy it regardless of their, of their expertise. So next slide. So how do we get there? Our strategy is to democratize AI with education. So our, our, our curriculum, uh, enable skilled uh, programmers to become AI enthusiasts or practitioners, right? To the exploration of concepts and techniques uh, that are taught in a practical and hands-on manner. And, and given also Google res resources and collective knowledge in that area, I think it's the right thing for us to do because we've, we've been uh, merged, uh, versed in the AI for so long that we, we have all the techniques. And, Putting that in a in an education curriculum and, and expanding that to the to the world is probably the, the best thing the best thing to do. So how do we get how do we do that? Uh, uh, next slide. So we have a we we have a, a portfolio. I won't go deeper into the portfolio, but we have a huge portfolio of multiple programs for that we do for Googlers first, and then to non Googlers. And then we share the content to the world through external program, including academic partnerships. Right? So that's where why we are here today. Uh, next slide. So to, to, to raise the level of, uh, of, uh, of the digital awareness in general, uh, we made a pledge to provide digital skills training to millions of people across the world via what we call grow with Google, grow with Google. So giving them the tools to grow. Grow with Google is, is really a brand, right? Grow with Google is an initiative that is committed to create economic opportunity for people through uh, skills training uh, and, and expanding that beyond, beyond just training. The goal is to, to be helpful, responsible, uh, and human contributor to the world economic transformation and growth. So that's part of the, 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 the Google growth uh, brand. Now, if you look at what our CEO, Sundar Pichet, said in 2018, so it's clear that people need more options to try in the digital world. The next generation of workers will depend on how we evolve education and tech in the coming years. And you will, you will understand why he say that. So next slide. So in 2019, we expanded our strategy to continue to drive digital skill education and connect that to the critical jobs. So it's not just about skills, it's about skills related to jobs, the next generation job, right? As well as focus to the next generation of youth and diversity, right? So it's really a combination of skills, job, the next generation of, of, uh, of youth, and then the diversity, right? Uh, next slide. So as part of the, um, the digital skill um, connected to jobs, so we, we provide what we call Google Cloud certification, like we have what a, a Google Carrier Certificate, which are online professional level training designed to help job seekers grow in, in, in high growth field to, to advance their career, their career. So that's some of the, the Google Cloud certificate, certificate that you see here, like Cloud Engineer, Machine Learning Engineer, or Data Engineer. So these are some of the, the key ones that we provide. 
And, and one of the things that you can see here is that the Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect, for example, today is the highest paying certification for, um, for second year in a row in four. So like people that acquire those certification are currently very uh, getting highest, highest pay. So that's uh, next is just to highlight the partnership that we did last, last October with uh, uh, Estia Datum, where now uh, uh, Estia Datum can provide those Google certificates, you know, to, to bring that to everyone uh, in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Merlin. Uh, so now uh, we will be able to hear uh, the engineer Nabil Al Mahmoud. Uh, see Nabil, if you can unmute yourself, please. Um, should be here. Yes, he's here. So can you please uh, activate your microphone? Maybe he has some issues. Okay, I think we will uh, move on to the next part. And when, uh, as soon as uh, Nabil can uh, activate his microphone, we will get back uh, on his part. So, so now, Professor Izik, are you here? Yeah, perfect. Yes. <laughs> perfect. Okay, so, uh, thank you, Mishket. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Mishket and Serge, for their efforts. And then I want to welcome my colleagues and all the participants who are listening to us. Uh, my name is uh, Hadi Ushikaybay. I'm the chairman of computer engineering department at uh, Eastern Mediterranean University in North Cyprus. Uh, we have in our department computer engineering and software engineering programs in BS, MS and PhD levels. Um, and currently we have uh, surpassed the 1,000th number, we have 1,045 students as of today. Um, well, we have some experience in online education at, at EMU. Uh, actually, it's more than 20 years now. Uh, not as much as Serge has, but some, some, somehow close to it, let's say. Uh, we started online two years uh, and MS degree programs in the 2000 and two and 2005 and these were in information technology and the master's programs were in banking and finance and hospitality management um well, of course we had this two-year covid pandemic duration fully online teaching in all the faculties of emu uh, i was the founding director of our distance education institute founded in year 2000 uh, which started these programs and we also developed a learning management system uh, with our team for online education. So what uh, I shall do in my talk, I shall try to explain the term artificial intelligence, its subfields, uh, research areas, application areas. Uh, then there will be a look at future, a brief look at future based on the report from Stanford University. Um, then I will talk about some courses that we are offering at EMU related with artificial intelligence. Uh, following that, I will talk about the recent AI strategy report of Turkey to conclude my talk. So uh, Mishket has already changed the slide. So what is artificial intelligence? Although the term artificial intelligence is accepted and used widely, I prefer the term programmed intelligence. Why is that so? because actually all AI applications are programmed by humans and uh, they mostly target a particular task. So um, one of the examples uh, similar to what Valerie has been talking about, uh, finding locating tumors in CAT scans using AI. Uh, what actually is done in that application is some medical experts come together with some computer scientists um, and these computer scientists have some special expertise, let's say in pattern recognition and also from the um, um, learning point of view, neural networks. So develop a program for this task. Then they bring together a database, a, hopefully a huge database of CAT scans, 
uh, already diagnosed by doctors um, to train the program and then feed new CAT scans to it. So the program is going to use a matching logic to find tumors which are very similar to those uh, previous scans um, that were diagnosed by medical experts. So what are popular applications of AI? Um, we can talk about many applications. There's video gaming, automatic piloting systems for aircrafts, climate control for greenhouses, election outcome estimation using early data from political science area. We have automated driver systems for cars, transportation, which is uh, becoming quite a uh, topic of uh, discussion these days. Automatic passport control systems and scanning systems for luggage in airports. We have, when we do air travel, we pass through these systems, you know. Licensed plate reading systems in parking lots, factory robots for production of goods. Uh, if you go to an aut automotive uh, factory today, you would see more robots than uh, people are working there. Uh, robots for cleaning offices and houses, one of the newer applications, but it's just gaining a lot of uh, popularity and some uh, other uh, applications. And these are all popular AI applications that we come together, um, uh, in, come true in our daily lives. So we're all familiar with some of those. Now, in each of these applications, a program is developed by a team of domain experts and computer experts, similar to the example I gave about brain tumors. Some require much more complicated programming and extensive training, such as automatic piloting systems for aircrafts or automated driver systems for cars, while others are relatively easier to develop, such as climate control for greenhouses or automatic passport control systems. I would like to, before that, Mishket, could you come back to the previous slide? Thank you. I want to give a, an example about um, climate control in your houses. For instance, you can have a simple climate control system with a sensor which senses the temperature, let's say in Celsius. If it is over 25, it activates the system uh, in, let's say, low power mode. And if it is over 30, then it goes to the high power mode. This is a very simple system where you have one, one sensor which is sending data to a very similar, very simple, sorry, microcontroller, which uh, gives uh, some commands to your um, uh, climate control device, which uh, changes uh, the temperature in your room. Okay, next slide, please. Now, um, now there was a report by Stanford University that was about seven years ago, but it's a very popular report. Um, it's actually the first report of 100 year study on artificial intelligence. Um, that's aimed at considering the likely influences of AI in a typical North American city. So how would it touch the daily lives of people by the year 2030? And it focused on eight domains, which were considered to be the most prominent by that year, by 2030. These were transportation, service robots, healthcare, education, low resource communities, public safety and security, employment and workplace, and entertainment. Okay, next slide, please. Um, each of these eight domains reflect different AI influences, different levels of AI involvement and challenges. So some of the challenges are the difficulty of creating safe and reliable hardware for these systems, like transportation, the cars, that are self-driving or service robots, uh, the difficulty of smoothly interacting with human experts, especially in healthcare and education, the challenge of gaining public trust, uh, the challenge of overcoming fears of marginalizing humans, employment and workplace. So there were some discussions uh, between unions and the uh, people who, who own the factories uh, because the number of workers will be cut down. So the workers don't do that, don't, don't want to have that and the social and societal risk of diminishing interpersonal interactions and entertainment. You, we wouldn't like to see like our son, our daughter locked in front of a computer terminal playing games 20 hours a day. OK, so then the report uh, mentioned some um, in interesting things about discussing whether AI was a threat to humankind or whether it would have more positive impacts. Uh, the panel found no cause of concern about 
some uh, popular reports that we see in press or social media claiming that AI is going to be a threat to humankind. Um, the report says no machines with self-sustaining long-term goals and intent have been developed yet, nor are they likely to be developed in the near future. Uh, instead, increasingly useful applications of AI with potentially positive impacts on our society and economy are likely to emerge between now and 2030. OK, next slide, please. Um, so talking about the AI revolution, uh, several factors have fueled it. Um, one of the most important ones is the maturing of machine learning, uh, supported, of course, in part by cloud computing resources and widespread web-based data gathering, uh, the amount of data that we can reach right now. Uh, machine learning has been um, uh, propelled, it says, dramatically forward by deep learning, a form of adaptive artificial neural networks trained using a method called backpropagation. So I don't want to go into details there, but neural networks uh, basically model the neurons that we have in brain, how they exchange information, and how we make use of information and how we learn. Um, the sleep in performance in information processing algorithms, it says, has been accompanied by significant progress in hardware technology. Of course, without the required hardware, um, we cannot build systems like robots uh, or self-driving cars. Um, new platforms and markets, it says, for data-driven products and the economic incentives to find new products and markets have also contributed to the advent of AI-driven technology. So, after reading all those, an introduction to AI, its fields, uh, research areas, application areas. So what should you learn about AI if you want to become an AI expert? Um, first and most important thing is you have to learn algorithmic thinking. This is also true for computer programming. Okay, Then you, have, you need to have information about, knowledge about machine learning, deep learning, and neural networks from the learning side. Cloud computing for pro processing huge amounts of data. Reinforcement learning and decision making. This is again related to learning, maybe the second item. Uh, robotics, if you want to build systems uh, which involve hardware. Computer vision and pattern recognition, uh, like the case of uh, brain tumors that we have discussed before. Natural language processing and collaborative and autonomous systems. OK, so what kind of courses uh, we have at EMU here? Um, these, these courses that I will mention, some of those are compulsory courses and some of those are optional courses in software engineering or computer engineering programs. Uh, we have the artificial intelligence course, which is discussing everything about artificial intelligence from an introductory point of view. Um, then we have introduction to image processing course uh, for digital image fundamentals, um, image analysis, image compression, issues like that. We have human-computer interaction course, uh, which is discussing human factors in compute, computing, uh, user interfaces, cognitive modeling, um, design of windows, menus, and commands, voice and natural language I.O., and multimedia systems. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have the data science course, which is um, a bit more advanced compared to the artificial intelligence course, which was an introductory course. Um, mainly it's about organizing and processing techniques for big data. So there's a lot of information given here about what we teach in that course. I don't want to go into details of that. Um, but of course, classification models are important because, again, considering the brain tumor example, um, the program should somehow able to uh, classify a newly introduced MR scan uh, into a category which was already determined by medical experts, OK? So there we have uh, issues like decision trees and bias classifiers. And then we have the deep learning course, which is basically talking about neural networks. Um, supervised and unsupervised learning are very important issues there. And uh, applications of these neural networks to computer vision, Natural language processing, bioinformatics, medical image analysis, and climate science are some examples. So um, we also have ongoing research in those areas, 
So almost everything that I have mentioned up to here, so we can skip this slide, Mishket. Um, and now, final thing in my talk will be the AI strategy of Turkey. Uh, the Turkish government has published a report for the four-year period from 2021 to 2025. Uh, this is the link to its contents, but it's in Turkish. Um, I don't really know whether there's an English version of it or not, but we have Google Translate, so at least for the um, uh, summary of it, you can translate it into English easily. It er mentions six areas of high importance, and the first one of those is training AI specialists and increasing job positions related to AI applications. And specifically mentioned is the aim of graduating 10,000 master's students um, in AI and related disciplines by 2025. And the fifth one is to increase the number of international collaborations on AI. So these two actually show um, that uh, Serge and his uh, colleagues are on the right track in organizing this webinar. And after that, Serge will be talking about the degree program and Gradeos. Um, and the Turkish government actually has uh, formed some new institutions for AI research, specifically for AI research. There is an office called Digital Transformation Office directly connected to the president. They have established a big data and AI applications unit in three years ago. And some of the aims of this unit are developing a strategy to use big data and AI applications more effectively in government institutions and to coordinate AI related activities, to support big data and AI projects in government institutions, and to conduct big data analytics and security research. And in addition to this, the Turkish Scientific and Research Council has established a special AI institute two years ago. So these developments are quite recent. However, they show that AI theory and applications are becoming very important. That is why the issues to be discussed in this webinar and the following educational activities are crucial for you if you want to become an expert in AI and related fields. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much. Um, so now we will try to get back on Sinebil Mahmoud. Uh, I know he um, he came back in the room. So um, Nabil, if you can please unmute yourself, we will try to move to your part. I think he still got some issues, fortunately. Okay. So we will move on Hint, Hint Shaheen. Thank you. Who is, you're welcome. Uh, I'm Hint Shaheen, a director of DOTUM Middle East. I'm pleased to present to you today a presentation on AI in the Middle East. So please allow me to show you the importance in this topic in our life on the impact of force, economic and social problems on education in the Middle East. Next slide, please, Shkert. First must be now that education for everyone without any discrimination, like gender, religion, colors, etc. Next slide, please. This slide speak about the suffering and dissolution in the Middle East because wars, economic collapse, and social problems. Except GCC, the rest of the region suffer from one or more of these problems. For example, Syria suffer from wars and economic collapse. Yemen suffer from wars and famines. For more information, see extra slide, please. Now, how UN benefit from AI? For example, UNICEF by GIGA to contact every school to the internet. And also UNICEF try to give children and young people equal access to quality digital learning. UNSCR did 600 distance learning solutions for refugees. UNESCO's International Center told you taught geeks mocks and other resource for technical education. 
Next slide, please. The problems consequence on some solutions wrought by Dotum Academy. So there is two categories affected in the Middle East and the process of learning students and holders or certificates, jobless. Therefore, this region must use alternative solutions like hotless and virtual university, including the metaverse or student in camps. Also, there is another solution, investment in education for a dreamful future. For example, with Dotom Academy. Simple definition from Do for Dotom Academy, it is planned traditional education and e-learning programs. So there is two types. Higher education, for example, micro-credential graduates leading to jobs by reskilling and higher education at the master level with EBR and the MDS and AI Bushler in the next year. Global education, digital literacy, project for schools with Google and Starlink, under discussion in Madagascar and the Ivory Coast. Thank you very much, Hind. Thank you, thank you. So now we will give the floor to Professor Mohamed El Saidi. So if you can unmute yourself, I will just uh, say something concerning the questions in the chat. So uh, we will answer all your questions uh, at the end of the event. So you can all along the presentation uh, ask your questions in the chat. And yeah, uh, at the end of, all of everyone's presentation, we will take some time to answer everyone. So Professor Mohammed, if you are here. Could you unmute yourself, please? Maybe he got some issues too. Okay, maybe we will try with Nabil, if you can and mute yourself. Just on a note for the participants, uh, do not worry. We will uh, do our best to get their presentation on the video and it will be included in the replay. So you can have um, the document presentation along with um, their presentation, you know, in, in video format. Uh, as today they have some issues with their microphone, it happens. Concerning um, Mohamed Al Saidi, maybe he, uh, we know the slides because they work together on the slides, could eventually comment the slides of uh, Mohamed. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, maybe in the. Hand, could you could you comment on Mohamed's slides? Is it okay for you? Okay, I think she she gone now. Okay, I, th I think we will um, not to lose the dynamic of the event. We will move on. Um, so now, Professor Ali Jewa, are you here? Perfect, perfect. Uh, hello, are you hearing me? Yes, yes, perfectly. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we I give you the floor. You can Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I would like first to, to thank uh, uh, Mishket and uh, Professor Serge for their invitation. Uh, I'm very honored with that and uh, my team in my uh, at uh, in Qatar uh, uh, in Qatar as well. So uh, I am at Oryx Universal College as a professor since like two years. Uh, before I've been about 19 years as a professor at Qatar University. Uh, and uh, uh, Oryx Universal University is as a partnership with uh, 
Liverpool John Moore's uh, University. Uh, and uh, we uh, today I will talk about uh, uh, an overview. It will be, of course, uh, not very accurate, but I try to do my best uh, because I will talk about artificial intelligence and research application in Qatar in general. But uh, I will start by uh, my research and uh, things that we do at uh, Oryx Nelly. So about local research in the area, uh, area it, it, it focuses mainly on, uh, it is based on algorithmic advances uh, to problems in a wide range of uh, areas, including health, where, you, where we developed an application about image processing uh, for discovering tumors uh, with high accuracy uh, using uh, conceptual method generally, on information retrieval, uh, social science, uh, text summarization, uh, anomaly detection in software and data, and natural language processing. So uh, during this last uh, years, uh, we developed uh, automatic meeting summarization in general, uh, automatic text summarization. But uh, last year we developed automatic meeting summarization, which are uh, for for uh, about 30 natural languages. Uh, and this means that uh, while we are meeting, uh, as today we are meeting, uh, our system uh, is able, if uh, completely deployed, uh, to summarize uh, what we are doing in this meeting uh, and uh, incrementally. And some, some person arriving to the meeting might have uh, the picture of what uh, happened before. Uh, so we applied also, also artificial intelligence for stock market values forecasting, uh, also to express data search result uh, for in the case of uh, structured database, we transform the search result into a natural language expression uh, using also unsupervised learning uh, and focused generally on uh, conceptual learning. But you also use deep learning uh, in the, for for uh, we use deep learning for improving uh, the quality of the summaries uh, by using. Uh, for to vect uh, methods uh, trained on uh, uh, corpus uh, which are public, which are uh, which have been available, uh, and it really improved the quality of the summary uh, by using uh, normalized standard metrics. Uh, so we also developed uh, uh, approaches uh, application using SVM uh, linear regression random forest, which are well known methods. We developed a, a new algorithm for machine learning, such as randomized conceptual machine learning, and investigate uh, new methods for replacing some classical algorithm by machine learning algorithm, which is a way to say, instead of writing a, a traditional algorithm, uh, either by using uh, imperative programming or, uh, or logical programming or uh, functional programming, we have been able to uh, replace it by a general machine learning algorithm that you learn from uh, the data provided from, uh, from the relation between input and output of uh, some applications. And this, I think, is very promising. Uh, so here we have below some main uh, publication, which is the foundation of conceptual uh, method. Uh, it's like multi-level conceptual data reduction, uh, uh, which, which is fundamental for many uh, uh, many machine, new machine learning uh, method, and we have also a publication about text summarization using a uh, conceptual method. Uh, so what is uh, important to notice in, in general in uh, artificial method, uh, which means a machine learning method and uh, uh, either supervised or unsupervised, is that we have to deal with uh, big data. So the main uh, activity that I call intelligent uh, is probably in general is to represent a huge amount of data by uh, by a few rules or by a subset of uh, of this data set that will represent the logic and intelligence of this data, uh, which means that data reduction, which was an important research topic this uh, this last years, uh, seems to be very uh, relevant uh, for uh, AI uh, data processing. So we can go to the next slide, please. So about uh, in general, he talked a bit about um, uh, 
our domain at Oryx University College, uh, but about you no know, in general uh, in uh, in Qatar, uh, I try to make some selection of some AI, AI research uh, project in Qatar. We have at Oryx University College with uh, partnership with LGMU. We, we worked uh, intensively on natural language processing for ex, uh, for uh, extractive summarization. We also talked talk, worked on about uh, application related to the finance on stock market forecasting for, for any uh, for any stock market in the world by using uh, data available generally in uh, Yahoo. Uh, we also developed uh, anomaly detection in, in, in the software while execution. Uh, and the idea of how to improve the quality of uh, summarization was about semantic augmentation in a text using uh, AI approaches which means that we try to, to replace uh, uh, implicit uh, words by explicit words, which means a vector of words that we, that we describe the environment of that word semantically. So we use also uh, so automatic extracting of and browsing in, uh, in search results in the, in the web and uh, in database. And uh, the search is really uh, intensive on, on this aspect. In general, in Qatar uh, University, we have uh, this kind of topics like early detection of fake news over Arabic social media, efficient and scalable evaluation for searching massive uh, Arabic social media and web uh, collections, intelligent system to digitally uh, support uh, paleographic analysis of ancient manuscripts in Qatar, evolutionary algorithm and randomization based uh, machine learning algorithm, and a non-invasive monitor to predict hypoglycemia in diabetes, the patient using artificial intelligence. In Carnegie Mellon University, which is a, which are one of the university, a prestigious university in Qatar Foundation, uh, we we, uh, we we can note that we have different uh, NPRP projects as well in Qatar, for, for which I, I even participated in Qatar University uh, for several one. And even while I'm in Oryx, I continued on the, the domain uh, on the domain. So we have uh, uh, we have uh, an application about optimizing Qatar farming. Uh, we also uh, uh, use uh, using robots and uh, and AI to autonomously and periodically gather visual data about crops to assess their development, quality, and expected yield. So using AI, of course, all over the, the universities, uh, this uh, this thematic is uh, very. Uh, life and rich, but at, at uh, QCRI, uh, we have an application about uh, an autom uh, to automate the cleaning and monitoring of solar panels in Qatar, in Qatar. and also uh, for social analysis, we apply uh, uh, ML to social data to build models for various uh, applications. So, now about education. Uh, this is one, one uh, of the important subject that we have been asked to discuss it, we uh, discuss about it. Uh, so we can say that all institutions in Qatar universities have artificial, uh, in Qatar in general, universities, not necessarily Qatar university, but Qatar universities, <laughs> which means that uh, because we have many universities uh, in Qatar, have artificial intelligence courses in their program in, in computer science, computer engineering, in the master in computing uh, and uh, with amalgams with data science, uh, information retrieval, uh, cybersecurity, robotics, civil engineering, or neural language, uh, or natural language courses. So some university recently developed even a bachelor in artificial intelligence, uh, as we might uh, find uh, uh, in uh, some universities in Emirate as well. So uh, as an example, so at Oryx University College, uh, in, uh, we, in the scope of the computer science program, several senior projects developed original application by using a machine learning algorithm. Several modules on AI and data science have been added to the new programs in, in the bachelor uh, by LGMU and, and uh, automatically they've been added to, to Oryx Universal College. So, the tendency is no general to deal with existing AI concept and software uh, in the university and industry all over the world. I can cite uh, the last meeting 
in, in Tunisia and Tunis, about 1,000 students coming uh, from Africa, all over Africa, between 29 of August and 31, only to present their project, the AI project. It was it really a very uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, grouping. So now about recent references, well, okay, I will not uh, read all these references, but we can say that, for example, for the first references, reference, it was about uh, uh, how to make the web efficient for people with visual impaired, uh, visually impaired users. Uh, and it, it is, uh, this this result has been published in Universal Access Information Society Journal. We have also a comparative study of extractive text summarization techniques uh, presented at EXA 2021. Uh, and we have also uh, intelligent anomaly detection from software by using conceptual learning during the execution of the program. We are able to detect uh, error and even to try to repair uh, by learning from the data uh, correspond to the input output of the software itself. It might be big data. So a, no a novel uh, conceptual method about randomized conceptual uh, decomposition also uh, has been published and also application on edge-based compression and classification for smart health systems. Uh, it has been pu published in the expert system application and uh, all, all other that uh, we can read from the, the slide. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. So yeah. now I will give again the floor to Professor Serge, who will do the presentation of the Master EBR in Middle East and its Gradeo. Okay, thank you again, um, Mishket, um, to give me this opportunity to, to finalize the academic vision and our contribution at uh, the e-learning level of what we could do in artificial intelligence with the industry in applied AI, as you understood from the previ previous talks. So we have these two master programs from Estia, which is a school of engineering in um, the southwest of France. And um, we build there, next slide please, we build there a master degree on big data and artificial intelligence called BR, which means uh, tomorrow in Basque language. And um, at the same time, of course, big data intelligence for human augmented reality. So here the focus is and the way we build it. So within this school of engineering, we are in the computing, computer engineering track. And um, next. So the BR was uh, exist as a face to face master degree there. And um, what is uh, what the lesson we infer from MBDS in this is the fact that from the very beginning we build a data lab, an innovation lab where industry can build proof of concept with students in uh, today the area of artificial intelligence. And as you see, one of the key points concern digital agriculture. Uh, we start a project this year uh, with Google and we have um, an Erasmus Plus pending project with Africa. So for us, digital agriculture will be a key area of, for the data lab. And of course, there will be else, there will be um, uh, sport, and there will be uh, marketing. So next, because that's already been commented. Next, uh, Mishket, if you can. Yeah, so we, in the previous part, I identified four key uh, competencies, skills, group of skills the students should master uh, from the demand of the market, um, from the job posting, and um, in order to manage the future of application in big data and artificial intelligence. So data, the four jobs we identified were data engineer, data scientist, big data developer, and cloud data architect. In the three uh, blue box, we have uh, an uh, involvement of Oracle in the uh, the other, in the pink one, the involvement of Google. So we are building this block uh, with the uh, key industry partners. And our data lab, next uh, next slide, started with a signature with Google, as uh, Marlene pointed out, the same agreement. And that's for us uh, very important to get started with something pragmatic and concrete, and that was on digital agriculture 
uh, last summer. Next. So next also, I already talked about the BR, the price, etc. You will have on the slide. And EBR in the online version of um, uh, BR master degree. So all the courses are online. We complete um, cool with the uh, with the we could um, complete the academic courses. We look at the English version. So we have seven or eight. Uh, depending on we have a planification here. We have um, uh, nine academic courses and we have four oracle oracle courses in order to complement the degree. So globally speaking, EBR corresponds to 13 courses. We have academic certificate and we have Oracle certificate, not on any course, but we have them. So that's the result of this bottom up approach, starting from the jobs required by the market and and looking at the future. Next. Next for the French version is the same in French. So to summarize four key features for both master degree, um, the curriculum is built on around four skill sets. Strong international partnership, strong professional involvement, and hybrid learning using MOOCs as much as we can, even for flip classroom, etc., for residential students. Now let's move to the gradual part because that's for the BR and EBR. So gradual part. Um, the key idea here is to build pairing between an academic course representing the how and a professional course representing the how, the implementation. And this couple is going to increase and the number of graduates we started today, as you saw, with just four graduates. Next, uh, three with Oracle and one with Google. And um, so the three graduates with Oracle are on advanced SQL programming, big data and artificial intelligence and full stack mobile web development. So this idea of having a double certificate leading to jobs in order to uh, answer the, the, the key questions concerning upskilling and reskilling. Then the graduate with Google is a special one with two academic courses and um, two courses from Google and the set represent a global vision of uh, distributed uh, big data and artificial intelligence in the cloud. And the idea to disseminate uh, EBR because we need tutoring is to create as much as we can in our international network, what we call the CDC, a connected digital campus. A CDC as a, the major reason for CDC is education and tutoring. And the second reason is innovation and data lab. So we keep this idea and our ambition is to build a network of CDCs. So today, next, we open uh, last this year, we opened two in uh, Africa, next, one in um, Ivory Coast and one in Madagascar. So you can see the formal pictures of the inauguration in March and July. And we already have one uh, key entry point and uh, uh, and the protocol signed with EMU, with Professor Isaac Abe in uh, in Northern Cyprus, and with Nabil, we are working with uh, having a CDC in Bahrain University and maybe elsewhere in the Middle East. So, next. So, in order to f finalize this presentation, is just to emphasize the fact that we create a strong dynamic around the building of such a network of CDC in the in the world and as a matter of fact in the five continents we have complementary webinar for latin america for china india and um, for africa and we'll, you will see how this network could uh, share for instance MOOCs could build hybrid uh, learning and aim in the future in the creation of complete institute of three years um, with bachelor, first year of master, and second year of master in the area of applied AI with a data lab inside. So that's our major ambition. We're working on that. We have many partners to help us in that direction. But I just point out this in order to demonstrate the great dynamics we build around EBR master degree, the data lab, the POCs, 
and the complete school of engineering in the click and mortar mode. Thank so you thank very you. much, Professor. Uh, so we will pass on, uh, move on, sorry, uh, to the questions time. So we have one question uh, by Lynn Garon. How can we get some hands-on experience to become experts? And a second question, this one is maybe for Professor Ali Jewa. Do we have any opportunities in Qatar to work with some experts in a collaborative manner in order to get professional experience? So maybe Professor Serge, if you can. Yes, or Professor Ali Jewa. No, let let let, uh, let uh, Professor Serge answer to the first question. Yeah. Which question is it? I, I miss it. How can we get some hands-on experience to become experts? Ah, okay, so the idea, globally speaking, the idea we have, and that I was, I would say, the basic lesson we infer from 30 years of experience with MBS at University of Nice, is that inside the curriculum, students are working in um, innovation proof of concept with industry. So we have to define with industry specific box. Students are working in a team in order to develop um, a running park, uh, satisfying the industry demand, and thus also participate to the knowledge enrichment and to the learning by doing some, what you said, hands-on experience, learning by doing. And uh, talking about AI, for me, is fundamental. So therefore, as soon as we're looking at gradios around apply AI, will put in the middle uh, a use case being prototyped by students. And even we are thinking and we plan to apply it. Um, that was part of a scientific uh, council we got uh, beginning of this week. Uh, the idea is to enrich uh, the, um, I would say, the knowledge of any EBR student with the fact this would be like a Netflix uh, business model. As soon as they got their degree, it's not over. We sign a partnership with them and we can have them enroll to a series of POCs being prototyped by other students and with the attached gradio. So it's kind of um, continuous enrollment and continuous enrichment of knowledge through the use case. Every time we're talking about use case, uh, we're talking about new technology. And that's the way we select them. For instance, we're going to apply to a Qatar um, uh, call for a project for smart port uh, using blockchain uh, for a platform or service engineering in the, in the ports. So that's an example, a typical example of a project we like to have. And of course, former students could benefit from that being enrolled automatically to this incre incremental enrichment uh, through use case and pox. So for me, hands-on experience, experiential experience, uh, learning by doing is fundamental in any any uh, educational um, program on AI. Concerning uh, the second part of the query, that's I leave that to, to um, Ali uh, about opportunities in Qatar. Okay, thank you, thank you, Serge. Uh, so, uh, by the by the way, uh, uh, the student, uh, the, the the participant who asked the question, uh, he might uh, even contact me in Qatar to discuss later. But what I can say is that uh, we have different ways to learn. To depend on the level, uh, if it's uh, for a master level, for a bachelor level, or for a PhD level, uh, master and PhD they are uh, a bit similar. We have different uh, research centers in Qatar in different universities. And one of them is the El Kendi Center, where uh, AI and data science are central at Qatar University. Uh, but you also, if you want uh, to have a project as a senior project, you have also different uh, faculty who are experts on the on the domain. So, uh, in my case, I have supervised different projects for PhD. Uh, for PhD, so if you see are seeking PhD, I make make either supervision or co-supervision depending on uh, on your uh, interest. 
and uh, also, of course, for master level, most of my uh, supervised uh, research are always applying AI tools. So this, I can say that uh, or uh, analyzing the data, which means by using uh, either supervised or unsupervised learning, forecasting, uh, and so on. Uh, so, of course, uh, it will depend. It will depend. Uh, you, you may contact me if you are in Qatar. I am also in Qatar uh, any moment, and you can discuss it. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Professor. Uh, so, if anyone has any other question, you can ask your question in the chat. And maybe to say that concerning Mohammed and uh, Nabil, they will be recorded and the video will be available in the version which will be online with their slides. So no problem for that. Yes, um, exactly. That will be the way we're going to deal uh, with that. We like, keep uh, take their video and put them online uh, with the other presentation which has been recorded. Uh, I just maybe before waiting for a couple of questions eventually, say uh, what was in interesting for me listening to my colleagues, listening to um, Valérie and Mala, is the importance, and that close to the question which was which there, the importance of demonstrating the added value of AI application for the society. Um, of course, uh, in the gave uh, an, um, a, a, a new dimension concerning post-war countries in the Middle East, where universities have been partially destroyed, totally destroyed, and where online is a major dimension in order to, to, to keep the pace of uh, um, higher education. So that's another dimension. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I would be glad to, to exchange with, um, uh, with the other authorities in order to develop that aspect. Um, and um, concerning, um, uh, so Valerie, Merlin, and, and emphasized the fact, and they took again the three levels of data, um, uh, data engineer, data scientist, and um, a big data developer in the cloud. So that was common, and that was interesting to see how these points are important. And in terms of application and use case, healthcare, agriculture come over as a key areas where um, AI is expected tomorrow. Of course, there will be others, and um, um, I, I just note this, and eventually the no-code strategy in order to open AI to managers, not only to keep AI in the hands of computers, uh, computer scientists, but I think the major trend of AI tool tomorrow is to enable managers to create their own application in marketing, etc. So that will be something which will be very important in the future to look at. And um, and skills and jobs, the connection has been emphasized also by Valerie and, and Merlin. And then um, concerning Isaac, and we saw um, the importance of education, he quoted Stanford for healthcare, education, and low resource community. So that's something also which has to be looked like a renewable energy, how we can control energy, how we can control water, how we can do sustainable economy. Uh, there are some kind of application which are expected in this area, how we can make life a bit better on this planet. And then um, I notice also that um, Turkey already created an AI institute by 2020. And, um, and uh, let's keep also for the Middle East, beside the Gulf countries, the Gulf countries which are well developed and well looking at the future, the importance of post-war country in the Middle East in order to enrich their curriculum with this kind of online learning. So that would be two, two areas of development for us in this region. So maybe there is somebody else who is going to ask a question. Uh, yeah, we have Dr. Salim Ahmed Nasser who wants to add some points on getting some hands-on experience in artificial intelligence. So I've asked him to unmute himself once you were done. So Dr. Selim, if you can unmute yourself. Maybe he wanted to add some things uh, about Qatar. 
whatever. Dr. Salim, are you here? Okay, he's, he's here. Okay. Can you unmute yourself, please, so you can add some points? If anybody else, ha can you hear me? No, no, we, we cannot hear you. So can you unmute? Be, be sure that your microphone is on. Could I add some comments? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> OK, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, uh, to respond to some uh, like some question, maybe uh, people will, willing to get hands on AI. Uh, I think that most of uh, people, they would like to to know more about these uh, tools uh, and uh, behind this uh, uh, existing methods. Uh, and I think that we short courses uh, short courses, online short courses, uh, or not online, I think that it will be extremely uh, demanded by people in general, by student, by uh, employer, by uh, in order to get uh, more experience and to be uh, concrete users for uh, different applications. This is really uh, something uh, that, that the people, they know, ask them for too much. I don't know how, how Serge, you can uh, place such kind of uh, uh, goals in, in the scope of, uh, of what we are providing you know, so far uh, in existing programs. Mm. Sorry. Uh, well, I, I do prefer, could you repeat your question, the key part of your question, in order for me to try, uh, I got something. Um, uh, I, I, I talked about uh, the complement, the complement uh, that people should acquire to be practical users of AI tools in general. What by complementary? What do you mean? The I don't know whether you Except refer to our this, master program, which is a complementary program, a complementary track we are building in existing university, and the, with the key idea of a dual degree agreement. That's it. Yes, agree. But uh, the issue is that some people, even if they have some master or they are uh, working, they might not afford to to like spend one or two years to 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 make the, the master, but would like to get uh, some experience on how to use existing uh, existing uh, methods uh, for uh, for AI, like uh, deep learning methods. Like yeah, uh, that's that's absolutely central to our curriculum. That's uh, not only the theory, but most importantly, the practice and the, uh, the concrete projects we students could build. That's the reason why I put in the middle the data lab, the innovation lab, uh, starting from real concrete problems, and then students build a solution, a demonstrator of the solution. Great. This is uh, in the scope of uh, the master that you organize online, which is very, very good. But what if some people they, they they would like to get fast uh, learning on these labs? Uh, is there another track, possible track that you can imagine? This is my uh, just to save time. It doesn't mean that we replace the quality of the master at all. Or, or of course, I the, think we're, that could, should be discussed quietly uh, because that's a. I think there is a, a kind of a good interaction and uh, the keyword is complementary and I think we always have to imagine that we are our students have to go and work in industry so they should master the major uh, tools from industry uh, and today we know that the future of data management and data analysis will be in the cloud so they should manage this uh, for instance these two dimensions data management and data analysis in the cloud we have many machine learning methods, how we could interactively play around these ML methods, etc. So we need concrete project for that. Without any concrete project, um, it's for me, it's like uh, having a lot of food and um, you have plenty of food, but you don't know, you cannot eat everything. 
So we are, we need to have a good menu, a good menu, good project, good innovation project, and have students working hands on in, on this project, and that will enrich the community of students. And that's also an important point I would like to emphasize. So for me, any AI um, curriculum should have a very important uh, project uh, where your students are working on real life projects. And that's fundamental for education today because 99% of our students are going to work in industry. And those who are good theory, theoreticians, they can go and do for a, go for a PhD. But 99% of them are going to industry. So we have to educate with industry. So that's also another important feature of what I'm looking at. That's the reason why we have these strong partnerships today with um, Oracle and Google, because they are the leaders in terms of data management and data analysis. So, and that's the two major dimensions in computing. So that's for me fundamental. And to develop with them win-win uh, situations, win-win situation where we develop parks, which can be used for Gradio, which can be used for a showroom, which can be used for events, etc. And and also the, that's very motivating for students to work on yes, such projects. For sure, for sure. This is really a strong just, project. Just, we may have next year uh, this beautiful project on smart port together because the port of the I think the Chamber of Commerce of Qatar uh, sent this um, call for POX um, for port management platform using blockchain. We're going to answer that project and we need the cooperation between universities in France and in Qatar. So let's imagine we have this project, we will cooperate. And yes. the use of blockchain for managing the services in ports. And that's part of the future. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Serge. Really, a uh, research, granted research project, and uh, uh, they are uh, the key for uh, realizing something interesting. Uh, okay, so thank you. This is really. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. So thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I would like to especially thank our speakers who took the time to prepare their very interesting presentation. If you're registered to the webinar, you will receive on Monday the replay along with the presentation document. Uh, so if you are a candidate interested uh, in our programs, you can contact us at this address, contact at datum.academy and if you are a company or a university interested in a partnership in the Middle East or the Gulf states with us, please contact us at, the end, uh, at this address. Um, so I wish you all a very good weekend and let's connect on the next edition of our webinar on Tuesday with Latin America. I just put the link in the chat. Um, it's This link is easier because it it enables you to register for the three webinars at once, so it's easier. Um, so yeah, um, I wish you all a very good weekend and stay safe. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Mishket, for organizing this webinar. Thank you, everybody. And I look forward uh, to building uh, your <laughs> means tomorrow uh, some beautiful projects together. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank Goodbye. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Goodbye.